All right, we got we got all the players today. All right, good. Uh, let's see. Welcome to the Township Committee meeting, February twenty second, twenty twenty one. This is via Zoom remote access. This is a budget workshop. Uh, roll call, please. Mr. Brown here. Miss Fitzpatrick here. Miss Holland here. Mr. Alat here. And Mr. Templeton. I'm here. Let's see, also present Mr. Schwab, Township Administrator. Uh, let's see, Mrs. Lohr, Municipal Clerk, Mrs. Martin, Deputy Municipal Clerk. Uh, uh, we've got Lieutenant Adam Tilger, uh, 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 the Police Department, and we have Mr. Robin Verso, our Township Municipal Auditor. Did I miss anyone? Aaron. Aaron, our, our IT specialist. Thank you. Uh, we'll dispense with the flag salute sunshine statement, please. Please be advised that proper notice of this meeting has been given in compliance with the Open Public Meetings Act in the following manner. Written notice has been mailed to the Burlington County Times and Courier Post and published in the January 5th, 2021 editions. And written notice has been posted on the official bulletin board of the Township of Delanco at least 48 hours prior to the meeting. Remote meeting statement. Um, this meeting is via Zoom. Uh, remote platform, the meeting ID and passcode have been published on the website and the front window and bulletin board of the town of Delanco and advanced public comments uh, will be accepted via written letter or electronic mail um, no later than six hours prior to the commencement of the published um, public meeting start time. And they can be sent to my attention at my email address or uh, via uh, and mail directly at 770 Coopertown Road. And members of the public who wish to make comments or have questions during the meeting public comment sessions may either make them uh, via audio option or by typing their comments in the uh, Zoom plat uh, platform chat options. Um, also to the uh, agenda, uh, any members of the public who are deemed to be disruptive as defined by NJAC, NJAC 539-1 may be muted after an initial warning for the duration of the public comment session and or remainder of the remote meeting session. And the agenda for this remote meeting is available on the township website, delancotownship.com. And for the record, mayor received no advanced uh, comments either by a, a, a email or a postal mail. Okay. Very good, thank you. Uh, let's see. Uh, if you read the public comments statement. Um, the purpose of the public comment session is to allow residents to in share information and or views with the uh, township committee. Since the uh, committee may be hearing the information for the first time, it is not always possible to have issues and questions settled within the public comment session. And I already reported that there were no advanced uh, right. uh, comments or questions submitted to my attention, unless anyone else uh, received anything in advance. All right. Very good. Uh, presently, the meeting's open to the public for comments and questions. Uh, this is a budget workshop. If you do have a comment or question, uh, please, if you could limit it to a budget item or a general question uh, regarding the municipal finances. Otherwise, we've got a regular scheduled meeting next Next week, next Monday night, and we'll be open to all all topics and all questions at that time. Are there any public comment at this time? Any members of the public are um, reminded to unmute if they're going to join by audio. Let me check the chats. I see no chat. Right. Uh, comment question section of the meeting is now closed to the public. Uh, 2021 Municipal Budget Preparation Workshop. Uh, I guess start off with Mr. Schwab. Thank you. Hopefully you all got the uh, additional documents that I left for you in your mail slots. Uh, if you remember, we had a meeting a month ago. I gave you spreadsheets with the details on the requests and the calculations that we had with that. Uh, reviewing them in detail and without the revenue side. So this next month, we add the revenue side. Uh, Rob did the uh, annual financial statement, the unaudited uh, uh, listing, and uh, use, I used that information to plug in the first page of the municipal budget spreadsheet to plug in uh, ideas for the surplus use for the various anticipated revenues 
I plugged in the information that the uh, assessor gave us on the new assessed valuation for the community. And uh, I also uh, plugged in uh, as many of the uh, changes as I knew about on the appropriations side, the spending side, particularly as it relates to capital projects, listing all the potential capital projects we've discussed, tried to plug them in to uh, uh, come up with how much we should put in the capital fund. Uh, also use that to give you some projection of debt service for the future, in addition to the proposed payments of debt service that I had uh, given you before. I also uh, gave you a, an idea of what we could put in the open space budget, which is not balanced at this point in time, because what we put there affects what we put in the current fund, because we can put things, if we can't fit them in the open space fund, we can pay them out of the current fund or eliminate them. Uh, I also gave you uh, the uh, projections based on what I put together, the projections based on uh, best case scenario, worst case scenario, and a couple other scenarios to try to project two, three, four, five years down the line. And then I gave you uh, just the numbers you always ask, you know, how, what's a penny, what's a percent, and what's the impact uh, on the uh, tax rate? And I gave you that information. So, and I tried to uh, summarize it in a memo, uh, pointing out some of the various things that uh, we had in terms of the revenues and the appropriations and so on. So I'm not sure if you want me to walk through that or whether or not you individually want to start reacting to it and move things along. You may want to have Rob give you a briefing of how we got to the new surplus number. That's sometimes a, a useful start. And that gives you an idea of how we performed in 2020, 2020 and how that affects what's available in 2021. So if that makes sense, uh, I'd rather have Rob walk through that. If that makes sense. Anybody have any questions of uh, Richard at this point? Otherwise we'll let with uh, Mr. Rimberso and with his uh, ex explanation of where we are. All right, Rob. Okay, thank you. Uh, we started the year the end of 12-31-19 uh, with a fund balance of 1,885,000. We used in the 2020 budget 1,050,000. We returned from operations this year 1,235,081,59, ending with a fund balance of 2,070,259,58. So we had a nice year. We, um, we returned the surplus we appropriated. Uh, some of the major keys to that was the construction code. We had very good tax collection. Um, miscellaneous revenue as well and our pilots. Uh, unexpended appropriations, close to $300,000 there. So we had a nice year. Uh, it's about as well as we can do. I think, um, and that's where we stand. I also note that uh, I received the information from the assessor that the added assessments for the uh, work completed at the crossings and elsewhere that were not in the 2020 uh, uh, valuation was around 4 million, which then that was billed based on a partial year. So that was money that came in that was not anticipated and uh, or billed and hopefully it will come in as they settle on the properties. And then uh, we added that 4 million, of course, to the assessed value, which is used for this budget, which is why whatever number we end up with, with the amount to be raised by taxation, as I point out, what I use was, you know, almost 6% for this first run through, but because of the increase in the assessed valuation, the increase in the tax rate was one and a quarter percent less than that 475 in this particular case using the numbers that I threw in for the purposes of discussion. So that's something you have to uh, keep in mind. And then you look at the projections and there's a potential, something you should keep in mind that if the crossings and the Dolan warehouses proceed as expected, they could add another $15 million in next year's assessed valuation perhaps much another 5 million into the 2023, assuming there's no new 
uh, development, those two developments themselves, which are not pilot tie developments or anything like that, will have that impact. Uh, it also means, as we've learned, that we've had to ratchet up operations, whether it's the police department or public works or in the office, and those extra trash collection, trash disposal costs, all those things you see that are going up in the budget, in many cases are related directly to the increase in the uh, people, the streets, and the uh, locations that we have to take care of as a municipality. So one offsets the other to a certain extent. So that's that information. Anybody have any questions about what Rob went through as to how we end up with the surplus we have and, and what you can do with it? Um, I, I just wanted to know out of the surplus, how much of that is attributed to the uh, pilots? Do you have that breakdown, Rob? I believe I do. I think the pilots are about $341,000 of them. Okay, thank you. That's the increase? That's the total amount received for 2020? Yes. Okay. That's yeah, total. I have to look, well, what did we receive in 2019, I guess was the question. It was like, uh, well, I think it was like 242,000. Right. right, so it's about 100,000 more. Yeah. Right, so in each year it increases and now with um, some of the new ones that are working in. Um, right. Okay. And then speaking of pilots, you probably got uh, uh, Doug's email about the proposed settlement with the Living Springs pilot, which will bring in uh, uh, another 50,000 a year over and above that for the next two years for 2021 and 2022 to settle on the prior year's underpayments. Right. But the, uh, the NVR drops off in a year or two, right? That's also true. NVR is almost done. Yeah, two years, I think. Um, I was well, hoping those, that we were Those are ahead. unanticipated revenues on purpose because right. you don't depend on them except for rebuilding surplus. I'm sorry. Okay. So they're not listed on here anywhere. What? Not by itself, no. Pilots, okay. So anything that we receive for pilots is what's called unanticipated revenue. And it then is what's used, as Rob explained, we rebuilt the surplus out of the million two thirty two hundred thirty five thousand, the pilot income plus any tax revenues over and above what you budgeted, plus any planned income, anticipated revenue above what you planned for, like the extra construction permits, and any spending that was less than what we budgeted, which for many reasons uh, was significantly lower. So when you add all those together, you add it to what you didn't appropriate last year. And that's why we went from the million 885, we used a million 50, we returned a million 235. The object is to return more than what you appropriate in the previous year. And so our new number starts at 2 million 70 versus last year was at 1 million 885. For the purposes of discussion and because of how the numbers were coming out, I plunked in a number 1.2 million. Uh, it certainly is a hot, small higher percentage than uh, what the 1.050 was against the million 885. It's a higher percentage, but knowing some of this other stuff coming in, I thought maybe it was a reasonable uh, projection. So that's one of the key things to discuss how much you want to appropriate and that determines a lot what your end result is. Uh, the, on the anticipated revenues, we, we are not allowed to appropriate, uh, anticipate more than what we received the prior year, unless there's some special circumstances. And so two of the items are lower, such as municipal court. We budgeted 41,000, took in 31, so we can only budget the 31. Anticipation that the court will get back in operation and the officers will get back doing what they normally do and will probably do better. The other one that was lower was the delinquent taxes. Uh, Rob pointed out that uh, the tax collection rate was so good this year that there's only $149,000 left in unpaid taxes. So you can't budget more. We budgeted 160 the prior year and took in 167 approximately, but we can't, normally we'd put another 160 in there, but you really can't do that because that's a you know technical impossibility. 
So that's down by 15,000. On the other hand, construction code permits, we budgeted 117, took in 424 because of the activity with uh, the crossings in particular, as well as with Stanker and Galetto's property. But I increased it to 150 from 117, which is a $33,000 increase. It kind of offsets those other two. Uh, and that's just a guess. You can pick any number technically up to 424, but we don't anticipate, you don't want to anticipate more than uh, what is potential. We're assuming that Dolan construction will take place, but if you remember, they said they're gonna do all the site work, but they won't start building till they have a tenant. If they don't have a tenant, maybe that site work will lay fallow for a while, we don't know. And then we're assuming the crossings will continue with their permits and uh, finish out the project uh, by the end of the year. And uh, I think the Stanker and Galetta work is probably done in terms of permits. I don't think there's any new permits going on with that. So that number is probably low, but the goal is for us to get significantly more than what you budget as we're thinking about 2022. Otherwise we're gonna end up in a worse situation. So when we put all that together and you take, you know, that's where you get that tax levy increase of over 5.8 and you end up with a tax rate of 4.7 because of the increase in the assessed valuation. Richard, um, do you know how, um, I mean, I have word that the crossings has sold 40 houses to date. Do we have that information available to us? Is that what we have on record? Well, here's what we have. We have that, uh, let me see if I read his, there were 18 that were completed issue to get on the books in 2020. That's the 4 million in uh, added to the rolls. Since October 1st of 2020, which is when they closed out the year for assessment purposes, they finalized eight more and have 33 open permits. So if they finish those by September, plus the eight completed, there's 41 new dwellings. He's using 224 as the average. And that's where there's about a $10 million value. And then the question is whether they'll finish the balance of the additional 46 units. So the selling is not as critical as being uh, finished so that it can be sold. That's the date that uh, Joe Raymond puts it on the rolls for taxation purposes. So yes, they are rolling along. There's, as I said, there's an assumption that they'll do another, uh, look at 41 more that'll be on the rolls in 2021. And then there's another 46 that'll be in 2022. Good. What's our penny at? It's about 42,000. And a penny and a percentage are approximately the same because our tax rate's a little over a dollar. So that's yeah. why I gave you that last sheet that shows a 1% increase in the amount of taxation would make our an average of $20 per average household, whereas the number I was giving you averages about 95. That's the high end, high 4%. If our uh, tax collection rate was so high, do we have to have that increase in the reserve for uncollected taxes or is that a different calculation? Yeah, I wait for that to the end. Uh, you guys end up saying, here's what we'll do. And then Rob calculates that and we end up a few a penny or so lower, I'm assuming it's not gonna be that high. But on the other hand, you don't make the assumption that one year is gonna be the same as the next year. Rob, what do you think the, we should be thinking about the reserve for uncollected taxes? Historically, we've always used 96 and a half percent. So that's a good way to return the money. If you increase that reserve percentage, it will reduce the reserve, but then hurt you the next year in returning the funds. Right. Yeah, the 500,000 number I plugged is based on the same percentage increase as the amount to be raised by taxation, you know, the tax rate kind of thing. So I don't know that that number is going to be significantly different than that 500,000. In my Before, calculation, Richard, I came up with 501,384. So you're pretty close. Yeah, so a lot of times it goes down. <laughs> Obviously, it'll go down if you reduce the overall budget, but not significantly. Okay. I would like to point out another thing. There's two caps that we need to be aware of. The levy cap and the appropriation cap. The appropriation cap is from 1977, it's been in effect that long. 
and that affects in cap appropriation. Um, I'm calculating roughly that we have an allowable inside cap of 5,340,000. Right now, the budget that I was presented is 5,397,000, so about 56,000 over, 57,000 over in the levy cap and the appropriation cap. The levy cap, we're way under. We have, because we have a lot of cap banks. I'm coming up with a levy of about 4,494,000 or million, and our allowable is 4,910,000. So theoretically, you could raise your levy for $400,000 more. You probably wouldn't want to do that because it would affect your rate. Right. But the appropriation cap, we have to reduce the, the end cap appropriations by about $57,000. Right. Our end cap appropriations those... increased, uh, let me look percentage wise. Well, they jumped up about 371,000. Yeah, 7%. Right. And that's, that's the issue uh, Rob and I were talking uh, this morning, that there's a number of items that I plugged into the operating budget that could be done through the capital budget or the open space fund. But because of ease of operations, yeah, it's cleaner to put it in the current fund. But frankly, for the purposes of uh, uh, avoiding a problem with the appropriations cap, we'll probably be recommending that if you want to do those projects that we'll put them elsewhere. And uh, there's also clearly uh, we have not delved at this point in time deeply into each operating budget. And usually we found some savings within the operating budget. So uh, I didn't realize that we were that far over, but when we went over where the big increases are, you'll see them in uh, legal and engineering as well as uh, pension and police, those kind of things. Uh, it's because of special projects. And so we can, that's what, we, that's what we need to go over. And that's one option. One thing you have to think about when we decide whether we're gonna proceed with certain projects or not and where we're gonna fund them from. Well, I had questioned at our last meeting um, doing an appropriation to the school board out of the pilot funds. And does that fall under this budget or is that a separate entity, Rob, if we do that? Uh, that would be part of the budget, but it would be outside of cap. Okay. So it wouldn't affect the appropriation cap, it would affect the levy cap. Okay, because I, you know, there was an article in Sunday's newspaper that Eve Sham is doing a special, um, they're actually creating a fund from their pilot funds uh, for their school um and since the pilot funds aren't distributed to the school uh i think it would be uh something that we should do for them since they are having some financial difficulties although i don't know that they have their state figures in yet uh, but right now they're uh, pretty much over budget without making a lot of cuts that I really think that's something we should consider. And I'm not sure if we do it at this meeting or at a regular meeting or where it comes in. And maybe Richard yeah. can directly. Well, operationally, everything gets done at a regular meeting, but the, this is okay. a budget meeting. So if, if what you're suggesting is that money that normally goes in an unanticipated revenue from pilot payments in 2021 instead are anticipated whether put in a separate fund, which I've never heard of that, but maybe it's a thing to do. Uh, then, and then there's a separate appropriation that somehow goes to the school district. That's something that you'd certainly discuss in the budget because that means you won't have those monies available for surplus for 2022. So that 2022, you know, your surplus will go down. And so therefore you'll have less available in that number and then next year's tax rate will uh, certainly be affected by that. What Rob calls a levy, I call a tax rate. So it does have an impact. That's a procedural question as to how, if you determine how much, 
if it's tied to what we receive in pilots or what we get an increase, mm -hmm. you know, that's a policy issue and how you want us to do that. Rob might be able to explain what he understands as the the rights or, or how you handle that since neither of us have ever dealt with money going directly unencumbered to the school district without for um, a particular project. I really don't have any experience doing that. I, in all my years, I've never had a municipality that's transferred to school. I talked to Tina at the state and she said it's very, un, very unusual too because typically budgets stand on their own. Right. Be it a fire district, uh, you know. I'd like to, party, I would like to just throw some caution out. out there. Um, you know, and listening to our pilot numbers of 341,000, uh, that's, you know, not a whole lot of money compared to Evesham, who has Route 73, Route 70. I'm sure they got a bigger pot to pull from. And uh, we're, we're looking at a tax increase here, as far as I, I can see. I, I, you know, this is my responsibility is with this municipal budget, you know, our police public works administration and, and our projects. I, I, I think we're getting ahead of ourselves here. So um, I, I noticed that article in the paper, they didn't say how much. Is it a no, thousand dollar donation or is it two and a half million dollars? Uh, I don't know. You know. And it seems to me once somebody starts this in the state, everybody wants to jump on the bandwagon and be the hero and uh, I, I just, you know, if I want to be on school board, I'll be on the school board, you know, and work with those numbers. But for now, I, my responsibility is to set this tax rate and to make right. sure operations are. I, I understand safe. that, John, but um, this we have in the past contributed funds to the school for different projects when they were unable to continue them. We, we did it for, I think it was a. Um, sporting team baseball team right uh and uh so Girl softball. right so i think we Ultimate can because we have some unanticipated money coming in to pilots that i i think i'm not saying that we set it up as a annual thing but maybe there's a contribution especially since uh some people have said no to pilots because it doesn't give their fair share to all the entities in town. So maybe it would be uh, a good idea for us to give them some of that pilot money that they aren't getting if we didn't have pilots. But so, we've also said no to pilots along the industrial highway to some uh, companies that wanted it and we kept it to the redevelopment zone. So, you know, I'm still, I'm still living by the agreement we made about the redevelopment zone 20 years ago and then right. and one. Dolan okay. is the only Dolan is the only one that I know that hasn't had a pilot that's well, the only Stilex, that's Stilex had mentioned at one time you know they well they the well they were them. already built out at that point it was I don't yeah. think they were in that zone at that time well, I think we got a whole lot more to talk about okay. than the I just I just the, feel that it's something that should be brought up and that we should consider that's my feeling well, I have to agree with you, Kate, that I think we need to look at the pilot money, you know, the found money that we have out there at Living Springs coming in this, uh, this year. Uh, we weren't anticipating that. It's found money. And if we're able to uh, give that to the school board, you know, whether it's to pay the interest on their long-term loans for this year, and then we also have... Uh, another phase coming in, what used to be the uh, Dietz and Watson property. Uh, we have another building coming in there with pilot money. Uh, and again, if we're able to help them for this year and possibly next year uh, with their long-term debt of paying the interest. And then after that, uh, with the Dolan property coming on, the, uh, the two businesses there, and then uh, the added housing, uh, at that point, they should be in fairly good shape. And I believe their long-term uh, loan is paid out in 2027 or 2028. Uh, but as we go through, the interest rates keep coming down for them that they have to pay in. Uh, so th that should help them get through at least this year and next year, if we're able to help them out, uh, get through this rough spot. Uh, and then once their long-term debt's paid off, you know, they're looking at half a million dollars there that uh, they don't have to put out. Uh, for the uh, 
for the project that we had with the building of the library and uh, the additions to the school. So uh, I, I, I think there's a way there with uh, found money without negatively impacting our operations on the uh, township side. Thank you, Farron. I agree. Well, let's let's have that discussion uh, at a at a future meeting. Um, I'm I'm not uh, in agreement of that. Uh, the school's financial situation, looking uh, over the last ten years, has been uh, uh, in decline. Really, that started about five six years ago. That uh, their budget started to show the indications of being in trouble, um, and throwing something, uh, throwing uh, funding towards them that we really don't know where they stand, um, I think it is, is poor management. Uh, but I, uh, I, I believe with, uh, with John that we need to focus on our, our own budget. Uh, the school district is its own taxing authority. They define the budget that they need to provide a fair and thorough education system to our community. And um, that's their responsibility. Um, and they craft their own, their own budget and the tax rate is set based on that. And it's completely separate and has nothing to do with the municipal budget. And that's uh, clearly stated in the district's financial report. So uh, I don't think we were in a position to uh, uh, to offer them funding, it's really taxing our people twice to pay for one thing. And uh, I think that's uh, a very slippery slope. So uh, uh, let's continue with our work on uh, on our budget. And uh, Okay, I, I'd like to shift the gears toward um, debt service, if I could, Richard or Rob. Yep, yep. Okay. So uh, I, I notice in your um, memo, that you want to, first of all, how much debt do we have? All the, ban, all the bans, the bond anticipation notes, and because we paid off that municipal building, as right. Fern, you know, we, right. the school's going to be, you know, pay their debt. We paid ours off. And a million for one the, the theories behind the carrying, uh, but it seemed like we did a lot of bans, a lot of ban anticipate, bond anticipate, band. <laughs> bond anticipation notes uh, cumulatively. Do we have the data on yeah. what the- A million four one four, John. A million four one four. That's yeah, that's total bond anticipation notes, Rob. Is I got it right? The bond anticipation note at the end of the year is 1,199,000. Uh, 199? Yeah. 1,000,000. One well, that's one issued, but we, have, we had a couple that were not yet issued, I'm sorry. Correct, mm -hmm. we have a couple authorized but not issued. Yeah. So are, are we going to are we going to float one bond for these bond anticipation notes? I wouldn't recommend it. My uh, the layout I have is that we will pay off the bond anticipation notes in either a five or 10 year period or less. The interest rates for bond anticipation notes are one percent or less. Interest rates for long term debt are three, two, three and four percent. There's really no. Okay advantage for so us Richard, to go to bond. I have a question. If you say by law, we have to pay 78,000 uh, in your memo, right. but you're suggesting we pay uh, 369. Correct. Um, just wondering how you came up with that number. Well, if you look at the spreadsheet that I gave you, yeah. I took each of the- Which one? I don't know if I got- It was in the packet that, what well, was in the first packet was in the packet I gave oh, you. Oh, okay, okay. Because okay. the Lanco Debt Service Alternatives. Yeah. I took each of the bond anticipation notes and spread it out either over a five year or the balance of a 10 year period because we paid some of it over off before and broke it mm -hmm. into even payments. Uh, and so that's where we get the uh, 357,810 this year. There is a requirement to pay that off over a certain period of time, but we're well, if we paid the minimum, the 78,000, obviously you could then delete, you know, uh, $250,000 uh, from the operating budget this year. And if you weren't gonna borrow for future projects, if we, the capital program was pretty much gonna be ended, then, then that probably makes some sense. You pay it off uh, and you're done with it. 
but, but as we know, you never end those things. And my recommendation is that this is the time you have all these needs, wants, whatever the community needs, if you still want them, I'm not making that judgment, you are. If you wanna do those things, now's the time to do them. The market is great for borrowing. Uh, you have, you dropped off that huge $400,000 bond so that when we were paying, uh, and then we had the payment to the sewer authority, we were you know, close to a million dollars a year. And now we're uh, talking about $400,000 a year. So if we, if we borrowed one note at a million and a half and paid mm -hmm. off all these bond anticipation notes, and I think what the bond has to have a 15 year life on these capital. It depends, it depends on what it's for. There's a, there's a, uh, uh, the, a life is set each time you do the borrowing. Okay. And then if it's two bond anticipation notes, one that's got a seven year life and one a 15 year life, then it, it averages, it's a weighted average kind of thing. I'm just so saying, no wouldn't we be better off getting one note and taking 15 years to pay it off at a lower uh, annual you know, rate? I don't believe you'd be at a lower rate. I believe you'd be at a much higher rate. Yeah. I think you'd be two or three the points tax. higher. You mean the interest rate or the tax rate? The, the, only, rate. the only thing you have to keep in mind when you do a bond, you have to get a bond council involved. All right, yeah. it's another $65,000. In so transaction costs. To do that yeah. It's like every time you sell a property, you pay a realtor. Yeah. yeah, but what would it save us in the long run? You're I think it would cost you in the long run. Yeah. Where we stand right now, you have a you have a, a, a note for one million one ninety nine, and we're only paying eleven thousand three ninety four on the interest. It's less than one so percent. You're not going to beat that. The 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 joint insurance the, the municipal access liability joint insurance fund has decided to earn money on their, I used to be treasurer for one of the funds, on their unneeded uh, assessments where they were getting very low numbers, investing it with the banks. And instead, they're loaning it to municipalities. And because of that, the bank rates have even come down. And we're paying, the last one we got was like 0.9, uh, I mean, it's, uh, very, 0 .95. very low, 0.95, 0.95%. If you go out, I just read an article last week, long-term rates, two and a half, three percent. So you'd be paying more interest and plus you'd be paying, as Rob points out, 50 to 75,000 in transaction costs that gets added to that and you get no value out of it. So my, my opinion is that we keep paying off these bond anticipation notes and try to, my recommendation is that you try to keep the line called payment of debt service, which is your principal and interest on debt approximately the same, in fact, growing a little bit every year. Because when you are doing this kind of thing, it puts you in, a, in, in any line, whether it's you know, a public works operation or debt service or capital, you wanna try to keep consistent with minor growth, minor changes, so that you can plan from year to year. And you have, if you look at the capital items, all the things you've talked about in the last two years, if you wanna spend on those, now's the time to do it. That's my opinion, hopefully, if you look at the projection, there's a 10 year projection on the uh, debt spreadsheet and it shows even with that and with the ideas, the capital ideas that just for 2021, that the overall uh, principal and interest would go from 370 to 355, 347, 340, 260. You know, by the time you get to 2025, you've dropped another 100,000. By then hopefully you'll have done more projects and try to maintain the three fifty to four hundred thousand dollar range. That's good management because you're not ending. You're not leaving your house. You're doing something to your house every year because you're going to live there forever. That's just my budget philosophy. It's up to you what you want to do, though. No, under, understood. I'm just looking at the bottom line. You present us with a budget that's a that's a five cent increase and. Uh, All right. You know, I, I'm not comfortable with that only because of all the work that uh, we have done, uh, it, you know, to get the industrial uh, lands built up and get the housing projects done. There's always been a promise, always been a promise that we were going to uh, be in good shape. But as long as we keep uh, these increases and Kate wants to increase it even more, you know, where, where can we get it to zero or start reducing it back. I, 
we build and we, it costs us more money as, as a homeowner. It costs me more money to see all this construction. Yeah, based on the projections, if we do this budget and then next year we have a 2% increase in the appropriations and 2% increase in the assessed, the anticipated revenues, and we even increase the surplus only by 30,000 a year in 21, 22 is when you'll see the reduction because that's when you're gonna get the big increase in the assessed valuation, finally. So don't we- the Crossings and Dolan's. First year, you'll actually see enough coming in the rateables that it, you can spend more and tax less. Uh, this, I also think that you're gonna probably need to cut 100,000 plus out of this operating budget. Right. There's no way you should stay at this number. I, I would tend to agree with you. And another way to look at the offset, if you spend even more, if you take some more risks based on income coming in and have a significantly lower tax rate, mm -hmm. maybe it'll offset the increase that the school district may have to have and not have to pay them directly, but take the same number of dollars and reduce your budget, uh, your uh, uh, tax rate and it'll have the same overall impact, but you're still controlling it yourself okay. rather than you know, doing the unusual, no one's ever heard of step of, of handing the school district a lot of money. They still have to reduce like a penny and a half you know, to get yeah. to the cap. I think you do, you gotta, yeah, you definitely have to reduce. reduce. It's more definitely, than that, isn't it? You wanna try to get a couple hundred thousand out of this budget yeah. to get down to a lower number, no question. So it's more than a penny and a half, it's almost like, Four cents at least. Yeah, four pennies. Yeah. Well, in terms of the cap thing, it's not. The cap is um, only a penny and a half. Fifty-seven thousand. Only fifty-seven thousand oh. over the cap. Yeah. And Forty-two thousand is a penny. But but I still think that you know you should be looking at either on the revenue side or on the appropriation side, squeezing in you know a hundred thousand plus. But that's but the purpose of this is so you can see everything and have that discussion. Look at the various items yeah. that are in there and say, you know, some is a great thing to do, but I guess not this year. Let's postpone it to another year. Or let's it was a great idea, but let's forget it. Well, every uh, every year it seems like we hit, um, you know, in the end we hit that surplus number to bring it down. We hit police overtime to bring it down. Uh, yep. uh, you know, hopefully this year we take a little bit of a different approach. Uh, you know, find other you know, line items to look at, but it sounds to me, and Rob, correct me if I'm wrong, but the, the surplus issue, uh, I don't think that you don't want to touch that any more than you already did. You gave us, it looks like you gave us the bottom line number there from, you know, what you're taking to put into this budget. Well, um, you're going a million two. I remember at previous years we we squeaked a million fifty out of you. You know now a million two. That was my number. That's not Rob's. That's number. not my number. Right. That's right. not my budget. It's, it's Richard's budget. <laughs> well, I, I, took, I took into no. consideration. <laughs> I took into consideration what Fern was talking about. The last couple of years, we've also reduced the operating expenses five percent. If you recall, yeah. I, I've asked, I, yeah. I know we did it last year. We did it a few years ago when I had requested that as well. So that's one area where we can reduce some funds. If we do that overall operational funds for every department, 5%. I'll give you that calculation as we do every year. Okay. That's, that's really unfair to the smaller, um, smaller groups. I mean, it's, uh, it's not that much money to a smaller group if they don't if their budget isn't that much. We did it last year, and I don't see where anybody was hurting. Well, it, it doesn't it doesn't mount to a lot, Kate. That five yeah. percent number when Richard does it, it's yeah. really not a lot. It's not even a penny. And a lot of the uh, the entities, as they presented their budgets, like Rec and and Dice, are are way under. You know, it's it was. Just we've never done the five percent on them. We're talking about the departments. Yeah, we've, we've never we've never changed that. Expenses. We're not talking about wreck and DISA. Right. DISA gets the set the fee. Police, public uh, works, emergency offices. management gets the set fee. It's just the departments. Uh, it's not most of this. Other organizations get set fees. They don't. Right. They're not subject to this. The library is not subject to that. It's just our overall operations of municipal. 
Hey, Kate, now that you're on sewer authority, are you going to give us that 50000 added or surplus? You know, actually, I was looking at the statute on that, uh -huh. and they're not a part of the public utilities, and I don't think that that is allowable by law. I looked at that huh? statute. Uh, and I wanted to run that by their attorney because it it's a you have to be a public utility authority and our sewage authority is not part of the public utility authority. Hmm. So I question whether or not they could even that it's even legal. Well, I'm not proposing it. I'm just was no. I mean, I, I looked into no, it. No, no, I, I looked into the statute and all to see. You know what what's the scoop on that and it doesn't look like it's applicable to them i'm going to do a little further research i also i'm doing all the talking here sorry guys um you know in in watching the real estate market and the boom and how houses are staying in the market for a, a week and there's being everything selling um how can the average assessment still be at 190. i don't understand that number never goes up and I guess that's the county tax, the county board of Act taxation that sets that. But no, no, it's not. No, we set that. That's only for an FYI. It's only to be able to make a comparison. We that was set the last time we did a reval. We took all the residential assessments only, divided by the number of units. It came out to approximately that. We we rounded to 190 for the purpose of making comparisons for the before the reassessment and after. And then you use it in the budget process. I can do the, I calculate it every year based on what Joe Raymond gives me, calculate it again. Suppose it's 192 or 193. The problem is that if you don't use the same number every year, it's very hard to compare one year that number that says here's what the average person's paying. That's used just to give a good comparison. It's not, it's not a technical number. It's not something, it's not, not even used in the budget. Right. Uh, but it's only for, the public and for us to be able to get a feel for what the impact is year to year. So you want to be consistent unless you have some big, huge change. And it may be that with the values of what the crossing selling for, that if the number is going up to 195 or 198 or something, you could put that in there, but then people say, well, how do I compare prior year to this year? And so it's just that I also give you a chart that takes everybody on assessed value starting 100 through 300 and every 10,000, there's a chart, and here's the prior, and here's, and we just use 190s comparison, but you can then pick and choose your own property and make that judgment as to what that is. I, I just often wondered if that number should be going up every year, like every I'll do year. the calculation, and then you can decide if that's how you want it. it I checked well, into yeah. the abstract of rateables at 2020, abstract of rateables, it's, it's in the back. Yeah. The class two properties for Delanco, which are residential, is 339,975,400. And the number of units is 1,793. It comes out to 189,613. Yeah. It's in the abstract of rateables every year. Okay, yeah, that's what I was gonna go to. So, so. it may have been a little lower last year, John, you might've been right. And maybe it'll be higher next year with the process. <laughs> it just seems to affect real estate sales when some people are you know, negotiating, they say, well, the property's assessed that, you know, which doesn't come close to the actual sale. Right. Yeah, so but John, also more. too, a ratio is applied. Um, for tax, for tax, for, for tax, for tax purposes. And assessment purposes, a ratio. What people pay at market value is not what they're going to be assessed at for taxing purposes. That's right. He's got to apply a ratio. The assessor has to apply a ratio. So if like, for example, the DR Horton houses are selling for over 300,000, they're not going on the tax duplicate at 340,000. Oh, what new construction went on at hundred percent? No? That's on with the ratio has something to do with it. Uh, Joe. I thought we had that was, on with Newton's Landing when they were all getting in there and saying, hey, we're being taxed at hundred percent. And the rest of the town is is much lower. <laughs> and what Joe explained that he was using 225 for the purposes of giving me a rough number of the impact of uh, the crossings, and it may be that that gets adjusted uh, later on. Uh, we've had a fairly stable market since the last re reassessment, so that the ratio has been around 100. percent 
But if it's starting to head the other way, then we're going to end up with peels and maybe you'll have to do another evaluation right. and so on. It's a, it's a messy, it's a messy process. Yeah. And a lot of the Newton's landing uh, got caught in that first reval we did. And so yeah. they were, so and that was at the peak of the market too. Yeah. So I'm going to thank you, Rob, for that, but uh, I can ask Joe Raymond to give us some insight on that, John. Um, let me circle back to the uh, the surplus, uh, the uh, one million two that uh, Richard plugged in. Rob, um, what's your feeling on? Is that a a good place to be, or is, is there any daylight above that, or um, is that uh, a little ambitious? I would say that's ambitious. That's on the high side. Really, we had a very good year this year, and we made a million two thirty five. So. I'm, there's not no guarantee what you're going to make next year. Um, yeah. I plugged in the that would be about the, the I plugged in the, 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 the Living them. Springs pilots. That's all. That's where I got it. The extra from the Living Springs pilot, as Fern right. explained. <clears throat> so if we give that away, that's going to we really should kind of pull that back a little bit. Yeah, but doesn't that um, doesn't that surplus include the new rateables coming in and the new um, permits being issued out at the crossings? It may have, I mean, the, only the permits may be affected, but the and there may be some uh, added assessments towards the end of the year. But those right. that's already been built in to the stuff we did this year. So the chance of us rebuilding beyond the um, the million two thirty five again is only based on that extra pilot from Living Springs, in in my best guess. I think Rob suggesting we'll be lucky to get the million two thirty five again. That will include the fact that we're going to have construction permits higher than anticipated, even though I increased what's in that line by thirty three thousand. Um, and the added assessments will probably get, in terms of unbudgeted money, about the same as we got from the first batch of added assessments, maybe more. Um, but it's, yeah, so I, I took, an, I, that is the million two is a higher percentage than we've used in the past, but I thought we had the potential between the added assessments and the pilots that uh, was a risk worth taking because without that number, you know, your, your current rate would be even higher. So we, I kind of worked backwards. And there's also the pilot from Stanker and Galetta. That's correct. a new pilot that, that'll be coming in. And it'll start rising, correct. That'll be start rising. The hope is, Mike talked about NVR, but if the Stanker and Galetta projects go as they've been, because they're based on the value per square foot, and we just got a bump this year, uh, hopefully they'll offset what we'll lose with NVR in two years. Right. All right. But there's no guarantees. Uh, can can somebody educate me again on the energy receipts tax? Where's that come from? That's a revenue. Um, what do we get a kickback from uh, the BPU or from gasoline or I guess Rob, well, I think it's or, that, that's tied to that's that's part of state aid. What happened was many years ago, before uh, when we were in municipal diapers, uh, utilities collected was it thirteen percent I think on your utility bills and each municipality was paid directly by PSE and G or New Jersey American or whatever the utility was for the fact that they're using our right of way. Instead of paying us rent for every for using our streets, put their poles and their pipes, they paid this tax. The state then said, you know, we'll we'll do everyone a favor. The utilities don't like writing 377, 387 checks each quarter each month. So the state said, tell you what, we'll be the collection agency and then we'll issue a single check to the municipality. And now we know what happened was they collected it for a number of years. They did that and they said, you know, this is kind of cool. We got all this money in our pocket. Why should we send it out? And so they started usurping it. And so the state keeps that money. And then there's there's been some legislation, that even a constitutional amendment to require them to give us some of it but they pretty much short stopped most of it. And they have reduced our state aid and paid us with our own money and called it state aid. 
That's the short. And I like short. your version. <laughs> you like my version? I don't know, Rob. Am I right? That's exactly correct. <laughs> Originally, when they collected it, we used to get a lot of money back in the day. We get. We, we didn't have any tax rate increases because of the increase in the public utility tax. Yeah. Covered 100 percent of the tax of the increase yeah. in the the cost of municipalities. I'm sure there's a lot of uh, deeper issues with that fund. That uh, <laughs> well, that's the answer, John. We used yeah. to get a lot of state aid, also, right. which is discretionary well, I, I, on the legislature's the part. Too. They're they're not but getting. They just stopped giving us. They, they didn't give us to us anymore. Yeah, they just cut us out. Well, let's work backwards. Uh, the committee, where do we want to be on a uh, uh, penny and uh, how many cents and and you know per average uh, household uh, tax increase and look at where do you want to go through the line? It's up to you. Kind of you want, which way do you want to go? Well, before you do that, I have questions on the expenditure side. Okay. Uh, with our engineering cost this year, if the figure is correct. Uh, we actually only spent 39,000. We had budgeted 89, but then for uh, 2021, we're going to 120,000. Right. Well, 25,000 of that is that's where we get into projects. If you look through the capital projects, uh, one of the things that we've talked about is the seawall, the Will Waterfront Park, and it appears that DEP is willing to uh, let us build one where where we think it ought to be. So in order to strike while the iron is hot, the thought is that we need to, and I haven't even gotten a number from, from our engineers, but you need to make your application for your permit. And that takes a long time. So my thought is that we ought to put some dollars in there and have that process take place this year so that you have your permit and you have preliminary specs and you'll know how many dollars you're gonna to need to do the project. And then for 2022 or 2023, whenever you're ready, if it's a 300, $400,000 project, we don't know, that's when you get ready to go. Or you can say, no, let's wait till we're ready to do the whole project, do a 300, $400,000 uh, appropriation and take the engineering out of that, which you're allowed to do for the permit. So. I have a feeling that we're not going to be able to afford to put that extra 25,000 in the operating budget this year. It's got to be done in capital or delayed because as Rob points out, we have to cut the 57,000 anyhow. And that would be one of the areas that jumped up. The other reason in general, why the, the numbers from the prior year and this year have to do with uh, the uh, expenditure timeframe we, pay for the design work for state aid group out of here. And that's kind of all getting pushed into 2021. So we need to pay, we, we got the, the state aid money and we pushed to get that project done. So we're doing two, two years in the same year. And so we didn't pay for it in 2020, but I got about two years worth in, in 2021 plus the design work for the CDBG work. Uh, is whenever there's grants, you pay for the design work out of the operating budget under engineering. Whereas when we do our own projects with our own money, the engineering design work is built into the capital line. So okay, I that's, the, that's the reason it's higher. But uh, I, that is certainly where you want to look at it very carefully and decide what projects you want to do, because that's maybe where you want to take, reduce that by 50,000 or more. Just that one line. You're absolutely, that's exactly what I wanted you to see when I listed that in the notes. And if you look at the capital projects, it's one of the items that's uh, you know reviewed. So I don't know if you want to go through capital, you know, you'll see the same thing with the legal is high. And that has to do with yeah. that Hawk Island question. Right, but the legal went over like almost 20,000 this year that we budgeted. Yeah. That was because of the appeal through the Joint Land Use Board is paid out of that. Whenever you pay litigation, even if it's an appeal to the Joint Land Use Board, they don't have enough money in their budget to be paying the legal costs for an appeal. So that comes out of that. And so the Kennedy trucking case ended up costing us a significant amount of money to successfully defend the decision of the Joint Land Use Board. 
I think we would have been under by 10 or 20,000 for what uh, Doug does for us if we didn't have that appeal. But you never know. So therefore, if you don't budget for it and you get it, it seems, like, it seems like a lot of money in this town, this small town of 4,000 people, these professional fees, we use them a lot. And you know, I've never been yeah. the biggest fan. I respect them and they're, they're worth their weight uh, in gold. But for this little town, we call them for everything and uh, they, they get billable hours. And, um, you know, when I, well, listen, I, I was a little bit of a, I got to watch my language on here, but, you know, when it came to the professional fees, I really was a stickler and uh, it seemed to drop them off a little bit. We were paying 75 or 50,000 for planning. And I, I didn't even know what a planner was, you know, when we have an engineer, um, but I understand what he does, but we all, I, you know, I think we have to take a hard line on the professional fees. You know, this sidewalk master plan, uh, you know, if, if most members of the public were to hear, well, we're going to spend $50,000 on the sidewalk master plan. It kind of like the average Joe doesn't really know, well, what do you mean you need a master plan? You build the sidewalk. You know, like what? I, the homeowners don't need an engineer to replace their sidewalk. So, but that, that's only one area, you know, I see a lot of things here are most expensive and I'm going to talk like a company man here. Cause that's what we're kind of running here. Um, the police department at a million seven, an average 2% increase, you know, of salaries plus expenses, that's $341,000 a year. You know, when, when does it ever level off? Okay. The taxpayers want to know, I hear so many times people want to move because uh, uh you know one that reached ten thousand dollars a year ten thousand i can't afford to live in new jersey i can go to georgia florida and i can live for eight hundred dollars which i know is they're inflating it but um i really think we need to cut some things off and uh you know just get a little tougher a little a little stricter um adam i have a question for you uh in the police budget usually we uh take a look at the overtime analysis and we look at uh, in this year, it says increase to 13 officers. When I first got back on in 2017, um, you know, I would hear uh, constantly, well, we want 12, we want 12, we want 12. And, you know, that was a far cry from when I, you know, when I was a kid, you know, we had uh, to go to eight was, was huge. Now I know the town grew and I know the problems we face in this town, but do, do we really need that 13th guy? I would say at this point, like we would, over during the uh, <clears throat> excuse me the budget presentation, a lot, a lot of it has to do with what the state's doing with police reforms. Uh, you you'll see uh, between the training and what the reforms are including, uh, which are still being mapped out and presented, where the officers are going to be taken off the street, um, you know, way more time than we used to for almost every type of uh, crime that's uh, domestic, drug arrest. They've put in so much more into it where, um, you know, we're operating usually with two officers a shift. And uh, to get up to the 13th, it adds a middle uh, middle shift, which will give us the ability to have an officer on the street while the other two are tied up. Um, so it, it, it's, it's a lot uh, with the state coming in with the reforms. And I mean, I think it, it is a necessity. Well, I know we're getting another development. Uh, you know, we're getting, I know we've grown with River's Edge, but I guess, uh, you know, in, in layman's terms, you know, you guys are outpricing the town. Uh, you could look at it that way, but I mean, as you, we have the statistics to show that uh, crime hasn't stopped. It isn't. Yeah, but the municipal court revenues are down. 20 years ago, I remember trying to budget $100,000 in municipal court revenues. We're looking at $39,000. What happened? A lot of it has to do with the situation that, you know, with the pandemic. I mean, it's, it's, we're trying to be the safest we can possibly be. And, you know, it's hard for us to tell guys now with the vaccine, hopefully it's going to start, you're going to start seeing the numbers increase, but it's hard to be, to, to send our guys out there with the possibility to knowing that, you know, there's a greater chance of catching because, uh, like I said, the vaccine hopefully going to uh, increase our guys with the uh, the numbers and tickets and, and, and so forth, which uh, we've already, you know, been discussing and uh, it's been addressed. 
The other thing is that we're looking at three retirements of, of experienced officers in the next uh, 15 months or so. So, mm -hmm. as it's yeah, I, I heard that. I heard that. So, you, you want, but these guys are like seasoned veterans. You want to replace them with a seal? Uh, well, I'm sorry, with what? Uh, with a special? You know, uh, well, that 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 helped us that we were able to give a hundred thousand dollars back uh, because of the utilization of uh, that, that uh, class two SLEO. Um, okay. that uh, that shows to be worth its weight in gold, and uh, you know, it worked out very well for us. And the I, I don't think we've ever had the full 12 all the time, anyway, have we, Adam? Because there have been people out for different leaves or what have you. One guy was called back into the service. So yeah, we've, we've, been never, a... we've never had everybody in in at the same time. Yeah, in the, probably the last two to three years, we've heavily been affected by uh, military leave, um, different injuries and so forth. I do where I'm out right now. Uh, so yeah, you are correct. But yeah. that, that's even more so where we were able to utilize that class two officer um, and he, he was able to assist us greatly with uh, ship coverages and then the reduction in cost. Okay. Sorry, I'm just not doing my job. A final question. What's Excellent on my Excellent question. That's, That's the welcome. key things to look at, John. Okay. Exactly right. And one, one thing to note is that, with, as, as Mike pointed out with the retirements, the proposal is based on bringing in replacements. We used to be able to transfer somebody from another department. They're already trained. You could hire them within two or three weeks. You had them on. No longer. We barely can get people on the civil service list. So everyone we hire now has to go through the academy and then has to go through the field training. And Adam, how much time from when we hire them until when they can be on the street by themselves? Yeah, it's, it's, it's almost a year. I mean, you got it's almost a year. six months in the academy, then the uh, FTO period is a 12 week process. That's if they do well enough to make it through the process uh, without added time. Yeah. And, and the, and the, and the uh, academies are no longer running constantly. So your timing is, is tough to get them so that we hire them in time, go through the, all the screening process before to get them in the academy on time. So therefore the plan is that we've got to move hire people earlier before the retired person is gone we're paying the new person at a much lower rate, but we're adding those two together. Whereas in the old days, somebody would retire today, we hire the next guy tomorrow, and the next guy is cheaper. So the impact was not as great financially. Now we're paying the high rate for the person retiring. There's an overlap of several months between that and with the new person, because otherwise our overtime really goes to the roof if we're down to only 10 or 11 people because we got three people in the academy. So the goal is, that, you know, I saw that and, and, and talked to uh, Jesse about that. And that was part of the issue as, and, and it's because of the impact on overtime uh, that makes it's not just a convenience issue. As long as we're maintaining uh, the minimum manning, uh, that's the issue. Well, how much, and as you know, Richard, I'm having trouble finding the, uh, the overtime in Jesse's spreadsheet, what 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 is the overtime allotment in his budget? Take a look. We have that. Let's see. Is it in the packet we gave you last month? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Well, uh, Richard's looking that up. Where in the uh, the committee? Where do we want to end up as far as a uh, 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 a final uh, increase or or um, number of pennies uh, as far as uh, number of pennies on the budget? Uh, does anyone have a a feeling of uh, where they'd like to be or comfort level? Mike, I'm, I'll be the first one to say, with all the with all the uh, progress we've made in the town with all the improvements uh, and the buildings going up and I'm, I want zero. I, I want to find that nickel and reduce it and uh, the school is going to you know end up whacking us. I saw the email from their administrator 
about the uh, the tuition. Um, but I, I just think we're in position uh, to stay level while all this building's going on. That's my uh, opinion. And and Richard, I did find the over time. Yeah. He has $172,000. Right. That's a lot of money. Yeah. Over we, and above what we pay. You know, we pay a lot in salaries. And we budgeted 186 last year. Fortunately, we didn't need to spend that much. So it's dropped to the 172. Right. Uh, but it ends up probably being uh, in the 120 to 130 range. Again, one of the things that we do is we if we take a budget and bring it down so it's good chance that we'll be added or slightly over it by a transfer that's less that goes into surplus next year we've been i, I, I appropriation surplus they don't spend any more than they have to you could budget two million dollars and they'd spend the exact same dollar amount uh so you can make the decision you're making is how much surplus or give you want to have in that area we could probably well, cut that you know out. last year i made a play i made a ploy a play that you know we were entering the pandemic and I knew it was going to be bad. I knew that a lot of people were going to lose jobs. Uh, it turned it turned out we were we were all right. Okay, yep. uh, a lot of companies uh, closed, or they're working half time, or they're keeping their doors shut. Um, but yet the municipal government is still at 100% efficiency, plus getting increases and raises and overtime. I think we need to show our taxpayers that we are uh, making disciplinary moves you know, on these taxes because the school's not going to be able to control their rent, mm -hmm. but we can control ours without hurting anybody. Nobody's going to get laid off and, and nobody's going to take a pay cut. We're not going to uh, stop any projects, but I really think we need to find that nickel somewhere. And I'll shut up now, Mayor. Sorry. <laughs> it's your show. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, Fern, what's your comfort level? I was looking at uh, based off of this sheet here uh, that Richard has uh, supplied to us. Uh, I'm between the one and two percent. Kate, I'm with Fern. I think last year we had a half a percent. Didn't we do a half last year? Right. We did a half percent last year. And uh, again, it was based off what the school uh, district was going to be hitting us with. Right. Chris? Yeah, I, I could listen to John talk about cutting expenses all day long. Um, you know, as someone who kind of was drawn to the beauty of Delanco and then in the short time that I've lived there has seen just construction take it all. Um, I would like to see some benefits reaped uh, for the taxpayers. So, I mean, if we had to, I could try to be comfortable at the one to 2%, but I'd really zero to 1% is where I would want to land and completely agree that the school is responsible for its own budget. And if we help stem that bleed now, then there's nothing, there's nothing to prevent the ask down the road. And they should just be up front with the taxpayers. This is what it costs to run our school district. And you know, if they're running up against the cap, then they need to be more, uh, more disciplined and go to the state and, and make those pleas to the state to, to find ways to plug their, their budget. But I don't believe that that's the municipality, so. But you, Mike. Well, I gave my answer, but I was on mute, but. <laughs> oh, clever, very clever. <laughs> That's great. I like that one. Yeah. Did you see my lips move? You know. Forrest <laughs> <laughs> Gump do something like that. Yeah. yeah. Always, always hold my cards. No, no. It's. Uh, uh, I always fall back to early on that you know. You, that's that's kind of the false promise of development, especially residential development, is that you 
you think that there's going to be this wheelbarrow of added assessments coming in, but the cost of the services to catch up to all that, uh, whether it's personnel or, you know, pouring concrete for sidewalks and sewer lines and all that stuff, uh, it costs you more for everything that, you know, for development. It's, it's more expensive. And that's why I've always, uh, you know, one of the things uh, that I've kind of focused on was, was grabbing a hold of, you know, land and open space and trying to keep that from being developed because I, I think that's the best investment, you know, a, a community can make. Obviously you can't put a cork in everything and stop it, but um, yeah, it, it uh, the $90, $90 increase uh, that's in the, uh, in Richard's budget kind of, you know, got caught in my throat there. Uh, I'd like to at least see, you know, that taken down to, you know, a half or a third of that um, to make it uh, somewhat palatable. Um, uh, on, you know, we're, we're in a economically, you know, with the low interest rates and we've got a lot of, uh, a lot of things that we're trying to do at this time, um, whether it's uh, recreational areas or acquisitions or, you know, poor John Fenimore has been trying to get a pole barn. Um, you know, we've got almost a million dollars worth of hardware sitting outside getting beat up by the weather every year. And uh, uh, I think for the last six or eight years or 10 years or more, uh, we've been playing Lucy in the football with John's pole barn and, uh, you know, putting it on paper and then uh, taking it away as, as far as a budget cut. So, um, Richard, what do, what, uh, what do you want from us tonight uh, or this afternoon to, to well, go back into your... Yeah, I'd like you to uh, maybe look at the uh, capital project and the open space project list because they are connected and they do have an impact on the operational because obviously you're going to ask me to put together something for our next meeting that, that uh, can get to either a zero one to, to get to these numbers. So then you can make that decision, but I can't make that for you. Yeah. So I really would like to uh, have you look particularly at the capital projects. That's where you ended up with Mike. Um, and then we could also uh, look at the open space uh, trust fund because that, I remember John mentioning that uh, when we awarded the bids for the field of dream maintenance costs, knowing we're now uh, out to bids for the event lawn that eventually once that gets done and under the assumption that it's done within the county open space funds that the bids don't come in if they come in higher than that, then we'll be back to talk about whether we need to subsidize that with, with our own money uh, to get that to happen. And then once you have all that extra grass, you have to cut it and we had gotten some estimates on what that would be. And so operating costs just to maintain the field of dreams by itself, frankly, end up using up virtually all the two cent open space uh, count. We've, it's, we've taken 80,000 a year uh, currently under the, that budget because when we did the reevaluation, it reduced our assessed valuation. Originally we were get, taking in over 100,000, but that was because the last revalue was done at the top of the market and we had to redo it and make it more realistic. So yeah, we'll take in a little bit more because we have the increased valuation from the crossings and, and so on. But the bottom line is that, uh, that we're, we're uh, if we carry over what we didn't spend last year, which is what we call our surplus for that, plus the 80,000, we're about 20,000 uh, uh, out of balance there. There are things there that we talked about. We've been attempting to spend 10,000. It's like John's pole barn for redoing something in the parking lot, which the cracks are developing, continue to be wider and they, they need attention. Um, we also talked about the uh, Gateway Park. One of the things I did was I put in the Open Space Trust Fund, and that's what unbalanced it, uh, $25,000 towards improvements there. I heard that the scout is no longer making that part of his project, but I know that both the EAB and the Historic History Board want to do things there with signage. And there's the master plan that shows everything from a pollinator garden to uh, fixing the uh, 
brick work and so on. I know that's been talked about. And so I just, between the signage, uh, the history board said it was gonna put the money for the signage in their budget. And I said, that's not where it belongs, it's a capital item. And so therefore, because that's a park, it could be done in the trust fund, but it could be put in the current fund as public buildings and grounds. You can do it either way. So there's, there, if you look under that, there is 25,000 for that. There's also the question of uh, improving the irrigation at Field of Dreams. Uh, there's not enough money in the open space fund to pay the debt service on that, but I did put in the money for the down payment, at least for this year, and for the engineering to do the planning for that. And then if you do the work, the hope is that there'd be enough money every year to pay debt service if you is a seventy to hundred thousand dollar project, and the hope is that we would be able to cover that in a future year. But we can't guarantee that. But I did try to put as much into the open space trust fund as I thought I could. But it turns out that uh, the the income side won't cover it, and so therefore the questions you're going to have to decide on is whether or not you want to fund work at Gateway Park and whether you want to fund the improved irrigation of the Field of Dreams. Everything else is pretty much just maintaining what we have and the next year we'll be adding 15 to 20,000 probably to maintain the additional event lawn uh, at Field of Dreams. So that'll offset some of this stuff. So that's, that's one of the questions you have to look at there. Under capital, if you look at that spreadsheet, I tried to take everything that couldn't be covered by debt because debts are a cheap way to do things and use debt for something that lasts for five years or more. And all that is listed in, in debt. We need the down payment money. That's the only thing, frankly, that's in the capital improvement fund, which is funded by the, uh, uh, the operating budget. And so the down payment money is 23,000 and we appropriated 200,000 for the road program. So that's the 225 rounded up uh, for that area as opposed to 250 that we budgeted last year. So we had a reduction there, but all the other items that we've talked about, I put in an operating budget. And so those are things that if you want to take it out of the operating budget, that of course reduces the amount to be raised by taxation, the couple hundred thousand dollars that we're looking for here. So you've got everything from the garage door replacement and public works to uh, a, a mower, which we could charge open space trust fund if we have the money, but we don't, don't there, to a, uh, a plow for 11,000, 6,000. Office equipment, we plan to replace the server for 10,000. Uh, the telephone system uh, is antiquated, not that it doesn't work, but you can't get replacement for it. And the cost to operate it is doubled to go, you can get a much cheaper monthly rate for operating the phone system, but you got to spend ten to fifteen thousand dollars replacing all the hardware to go to the 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 new computer uh, I uh, I can't even pronounce it the uh, over computer system rather than we currently have an old system. Uh, so I have that in there. Uh, we have uh, the current fund there's fifty thousand for the grant, the engineering that Fern was talking about for the DOT and the the uh, CDBG monies, uh, the sidewalk stuff, there's, there's a big amount in there in terms of debt service even, as well as uh, using existing capital and using the grant to do that work on Coopertown. Harry explained that 78,000 might cover the actual sidewalk work on Coopertown between uh, Hickory and Pennsylvania. But in order for that to be worthwhile, because right now it floods, there needs to be road work, curb work, and drainage work that the county will not do. And so there's 100,000 in there for that, plus another uh, 40,000 for engineering, just for that portion of the project, not the sidewalk portion, but the road and drainage portion. So that's built into that, but that's borrowing, that's debt service. But there is $63,000 in unspent sidewalk money that when we were reacting to the need to do things on Coopertown, we put the money in there, but we nobody decided had an idea where to put the, the sidewalk. So the master plan where we paid the engineer a very small amount to do the design, the master plan where to put the sidewalk, and he'll go over that with everybody. But then if you're gonna do the go out to bids and design, set the grades and do all the things you have to do to 
physically build the sidewalks, uh, you know, that's another amount of money. So I put 60,000 for that. That includes sidewalk in front of the municipal building and the public works, which is part of the, the walking from the train station to the businesses. And then you've got the waterfront shoreline project that I mentioned that I put 25,000 in the operating budget for engineering. It may be half that, maybe twice that for area to get DEP to give us a permit to do it when we're ready to do it. Uh, we've got, uh, I put in here the uh, irrigation improvements for Field of Dreams work, but I put the, in the open space is for the down payment and the engineering plan, but I did indicate there'd be new debt based on that, which would currently I have listed as being paid back through the operating fund, but if there's enough money in open space, we could pay it back from that. You got the Field of Dreams parking lot improvements for 10,000 is guesstimate. The improvements to Gateway Park, 25,000 for hardscape, educational signing and landscaping. And then there's the issue of the uh, Hawk Island property acquisition, the lien issue. I, the amount that's there is based on the worst case scenario, which is the dollar amount that the person paid for the lien. And there's no money in open space for it. It's not a capital item. So I put it under legal OE. You could determine not to do that because let them foreclose. That's an issue that you guys have been discussing for a while and that could be eliminated. So. Those are the items that need you to be thinking what you want to do. And with that direction, I can delete things or not delete th things and say, here's what the impact is. Any questions? Okay. Well, the township committee hasn't approved the plan yet for the Gateway Park, the additional purchase of no. Gateway Park. No, we haven't even approved oh, that. For, you mean the improvements, the improvements to Gateway Park? Yeah, they haven't approved Scott's plan. Rick did, no. but the township hasn't. Correct. So the question would be if you could approve the plan and say that's very nice, but 2021 is not when it's going to happen, or we want to borrow for it. We're, we're going to, we want to do it, but we're going to only need 5% as a down payment. I have no idea where these numbers are even close. I was right. just throwing it in for your discussion so that Kate's question could be answered. Do you want to do the work? When do you want to do it? And then we would have to get real numbers for it. This is like a placeholder, as it were. Uh, we should, I think you should probably, because of the open space budget, I think that's kind of thing you need to postpone, but that's, yeah, but if it's a high priority, then we look for someplace else. I, that's not my, it's not an operational thing, but it, it is an item that's causing the open space budget to be out of whack at the moment, unless you borrow for it. And you that can may decide, be a, yes. Yeah, that may be a project that we apply to the county for grant. Maybe a future grant that might be great for the next year. Yeah, I think with Gateway, it's great that we have the, uh, the important part is we have the added lot that was added to it. And uh, the way it is right now, it's just a matter of mowing as far as maintenance. Um, right. Not having to worry about irrigation and plants, et cetera. And if we can kick that down the road for uh, maybe 2022, uh, and yeah. take a look at it then. Yeah, you might want to be thinking about the fact, Kate, didn't you report that the county is really going to take down that building on Burlington yeah. this year? Well, yeah, they're supposed they to then give us that lot to attach have, to. Yes, they're going to, the re, they're, going to re, they're going to retain a portion of the property. Yeah, for the road, uh, yeah. For the road in case they have to um, move back the road, but it doesn't look like they're going to move back. They're going to have an easement on it and they're going to try to have the pole moved. But yes, uh, the contractor has the key to the property. Uh, right. They're going to be removing asbestos first. That's going to take about 12 days and then the demolition. And they'll be in touch with uh, the police department because there's well, going to have to right. The key the thing is whether or not the county is giving us that land. Yes, so they're giving us a big portion of In terms of the of Rex it. overall plan, they have to plan for that as well right. as Gateway. And it may be that it'll be next year when it might make sense to think about where you want to put resources for those two properties. Right. That means telling history and EAB that at this point in time, you might, want to need to, you may have to hold off on, on doing historic and environmental signage, pollinator signage, because we're not gonna do anything. It may, so, be, it may be better to do both at the same time and apply for both at the right. county level, uh, because one project wouldn't be 
250,000, obviously, but to do them both, and since they're on our main drive, I think it would be uh, a good idea to go through the county grant program. Is that generally what we're headed for? I can delete that from the open space budget. Any problems? Agreement. All right. I'm in agreement. Okay, thank you. Just to, to interject something while we got the Adam on board here and, and, and Kate's been talking with the county that uh, as far as that easement on the corner property there at the bend, uh, I, I think we need to get our nose into that, that uh, and really think about it as far as if the county's trying to flatten out that curve there, whether they're not Mike. they said they're not trying to flatten it out they said what they feel is going to happen is that just with the site view being opened up the traffic is going to start moving faster anyway so it is not their intention to move it back they're just putting an easement on the property in the event that somewhere along the line it becomes necessary to do something but they're they have no intentions of doing that right now yeah. They don't see it as uh, as a good idea to move right. the property back. Well, let's keep an eye on that. That uh, something doesn't happen where they straighten that that curve out, and, and we get really traffic moving too fast. Where, yeah, where, they don't have any intention of doing that right now. I sat, I sat in a meeting with Joe Brickley and Marty Livingston, and uh, when we're doing the uh, crosswalk at Vine Street. Yeah, I remember that. We're not doing one at uh, we're not doing one at Walters. Wait a minute, did I get that Fine. wrong? No, we're not Fine. doing Fine. Fine. Because we want to get the building down. They want to get the building down so we can observe the site right. uh, triangle and so forth. We think it'll improve the Vine Street crosswalk with the building down, okay? Yeah. So, but no, they don't want to move it back because they feel it's a uh, traffic right. buffer uh, leaving that bend there. So let's just get it down first, see what, see what we got. Yeah. yeah. Demolition in your house. Take the wall out. What do we got? What are we going to build? <laughs> so, anybody else have any comments on any of the capital projects? Pull them. We got to keep it. Give me some direction. I would say Hawk Island because I don't think that guy's going to move forward with a foreclosure and maybe hold it off till next year. Because he's not going to move forward with that. That's another 30000 okay. That will. Um, they're not going to move. Yeah, that's going to really help with that uh, cap problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, and that, um, does that have any, no, does that have anything to do with the legal? That's the like, legal OE, bring that'll 30, reduce legal OE. That's by the legal, yeah. Correct. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, what about the waterfront uh, seawall? Do we keep money in there to pay for uh, getting the permit on that or? Well, I don't, I don't think you're going to get anything done this year. I mean, look how long it takes. Well, just uh, for the permit, John, not to actually build it, just to make the application. I would move forward. We've been wait, we've been working on that for a long time. I would say we move forward with that. People, what about when if, if somebody changes jobs or dies up there at DEP, we got to start all over again, convincing someone. And and it's I've been at it for 12 years on that damn thing, so. I'd like to at least get get a paper in hand that says we can do it. Maybe I'll ask Carrie to give us a proposal so you have an actual dollar amount, and it may be that it's not twenty five thousand, which case maybe you know if it's five thousand or ten thousand dollar cost that'll reduce that. And I'll look uh, for and more carefully at what we budgeted for engineering. That would be an area to try to, in addition to maybe dropping the twenty five thousand dollar number, maybe dropping some of the other numbers down. That would be something did, I'm looking at. Did you never do the engineering on the uh, Zerpa property yet? Yeah, I thought we did part of it. There's been preliminary, but there's the difference between having a preliminary drawing and making the actual formal application for a permit to construct, uh, which doesn't need the final design. But I remember what we went through just to get with the street ends. Think about how long ago we started to get that permit to when that job was done. So if you don't start now, you know, we'll all be in beards, but well, you can do that without, but anyhow. So how about if I ask Carrie for that number, but, and then I'll get back to you on it by email, probably. If it stays at 25, then as I said, I, I could have put it in open space if there's enough, but there's not enough dollars in open space to pay for it. 
but uh, I'll take try to take a look and see if I can reduce that overall to absorb that. Uh, the other possibility would be of just thinking, Rob, we had money for the seawalls for the street ends, but we didn't spend it all. Could we use the unspent money from the, it's called seawalls, for the preliminary engineering for the continuation of the seawall for the next phase? Why not? It's out of our capital account, isn't it? Yeah. What was the original original? Rob and I have to discuss it. What was your original? We allocate, it was for, for design and construction of seawalls on either side. And now we finally got the DP to say we can connect them, but we need to make an application. And, and the bids came in well below estimates. So there is enough money perhaps to pay the engineer for preliminary expenses for the next phase. If that would be an appropriate place to charge it. Makes I sense. Why not. Well, I think it's, it's connected to the project. So. All right, we'll try that. I'll see if I can uh, take it out of uh, put it in capital. All right, just trying to think outside the box a little. And for the um, in in the open space fund, like any anything in here that can be that isn't already committed that can be taken out, like we can leave the parking lot as is, and we cannot do the irrigation improvements. Okay. That was the pump for the current right. field, not the one, not the potential for doing the one at the event lawn or this. Well, actually it's for a second well. And the purpose of the second well is it would take over uh, the irrigation for the softball and for the potential of the future one. But the main thing is so that there's sufficient capacity in the existing well to handle the soccer fields, which obviously is not, as you've seen, whenever it gets dry, it's not sufficient to uh, keep the grass from uh receding so we're not gonna uh, we're, yeah we're not going to irrigate the new field no it's not, we're not, gonna irrigate not to irrigate it yeah we don't want right. to irrigate it we don't want it to look like a soccer field right i understood that i was just making sure that that wasn't this yeah so. it, is, it is true that with that well if at a future date you ever decided to do it you'd have that capacity but unfortunately harry says we can't just fix what's there to just improve enough for the soccer field and the softball field, we do have to drill another well. And the physical best way to do it is to separate out what goes to the soccer fields from what goes to the softball field. And that's how you get enough capacity. Uh, but you would have capacity to do more if you ever needed to. One of the things we don't irrigate is we don't irrigate the non-playing surfaces. And yet sometimes those go pretty bad. So if you ever wanted to adjust and improve things, you have that ability. But that's, that's the thing. You could just decide that this is not the year to do that. Although the dollar amount in the uh, open space fund for that is, uh, let's see, yep. is only $4,500. We're not talking yeah. about big numbers. We have to be prepared to be paying the debt service on it in the future. But uh, you have to get the permit from this DP and then the spec is very minor going out to bids for that one in terms of engineering, because it's just it's fairly routine the spec. There's not a lot of detail on it. So how long if that's what permit be is a desire that we should do it. Richard, how long would the permit be good for? Is that something we have a, a year or is it? Yeah, year? yeah. Yeah, permits are generally until I've never seen any permit like that. Uh, I got involved with well drilling all of the time when I was in Haddonfield. We had permits all the time. But until the world changed, unless something changed with the aquifers or something, uh, there was no no time frame. So yeah, you could get the permit this year and not do the work. And then if you do the work in 2022, your first payment's not to 2023, but you don't need the down payment money in 2021. That's what you'd save the down payment money if you don't do it in 21. Thank you. So you, I should probably keep that there. I guess. What about the okay. walkway? Um, I see what's... that's on open space, the walkway. Uh, the walkway, yeah, I was going to take all that out. That's all the yeah. gateway park. Yeah, okay. Walkway. We're going to take yeah, that out. Which includes okay. doing any more repairs on those bricks and so on, Kate. I mean, it's not cheap. 
So it's leaving Gateway the way it is. Yeah. Where was the, uh, the irrigation stuff you were talking about two minutes ago, Richard? It's on page uh, two of the capital projects, the back, back half there. Item, um, uh, item nine, irrigation improvements, field of dreams. $90,000, yeah. Uh, and the 90000 Actually, I would like to get from Harry. I put twenty in there because things are always high, but there's more to that than I would realize. But I will have to double check with him as to whether or not we're going to need twenty thousand engineering. Hopefully, it's going to be a lot less than that. I just threw a number in there because that's anything they do ends up costing twenty thousand uh, dollars. So perhaps it will be a little less than that. But it's what you need is the down payment money if we're going to appropriate do a capital ordinance right. for up to ninety thousand. Let's say. Yeah. Um, so I got to get that stuff from Harry. So we're going to get rid of this. We're going to get rid of. And um, I guess, you know, we'll. We still want to go ahead with uh, whatever we can do in terms of the sidewalks on, with the CDBG money on uh, Cooper Town Road. Yes. I think we need to move forward on that. That's, yeah. that's important. Yeah. Okay. We are on, um, I attended the uh, Zoom CDGB meeting the other night. We are on track to receive $75,000. 75? Okay. Mm -hmm. Not 78? Not 78, 75. All right. Is the allocation. Okay, so we'll move forward with that with, with Harry. I assume if we got it, you know, the public works equipment, the office equipment, uh, I mean, these are the kind of things to try to avoid, but we could, we could put them in capital and do a five year spread things out a little bit, save, you know, 20 or 30,000. I try to avoid small things like that really shouldn't, you shouldn't go through capital even when you legally can. But uh, if we have to cut another 20 or 30,000, we could either do it from operating or cut equipment or shift it into uh, capital. And then you see, I have the pole barn listed again, the paving and front of the public works garage and near the back where it connects the municipal lot, which is just all dirt. The fuel dispensers, one of the things we have to do with that is renegotiate our agreements with the users and have them add another 15 to 30 cents I've calculated to the per gallon charge to offset their share of the improvements replacing the dispenser and the, the record keeping stuff based on, we sell 50% of the fuel that's used there is, is uh, used by other governmental entities. We're the central dispensary and we bill them. We add 10 cents for our billing costs, but we need to add another 15 to 30 cents to offset this $25,000 capital cost over a five year period, to pay the debt service. We're gonna lose any customers? Well, right now, well, I mean, you're seeing prices go up, but frankly, uh, the the cost for fuel has been extraordinarily low. Yeah. And so, just like when in New Jersey they added the gas tax when the rate was low, you didn't get as much pushback. Uh, so now is the time to do it, probably before the rates the, the usage world. gets up. I think one of the problems, you know, we're still so much cheaper than they could get anywhere else. Okay. That's yeah. why they do right. it. But, but you're right, year to year. People are comparing, but if they go somewhere else, they're going to have to pay a lot more. And we're not talking about big numbers. We're talking about so you know three, four, five thousand dollars extra to pay their share of the debt service. A twenty-five thousand dollar cost over five years, even with interest, is not a huge number. What about the street sweeper? I mean, didn't yeah. we just purchase one not too long ago? And I, I never see it out that often. 
Now, John explained that Street Sweeper is, is he, pretty old at this point in time. I thought it was for a, next year, it's not this year. It's yeah. not in this year's budget, but for maybe next year or the year after. Okay. He would, he's, he, we're negotiating with Edgewater Park. They bought a new sweeper and there's no point in us both having it. Uh, Christine gave me some good information on, we'll get some pricing on contract sweeping and make that judgment for 2022. That's why they all, we also are required to have a three-year capital plan. And so since that was mentioned, I included what John had put in there. I don't know that's necessarily uh, where we're headed for, but, uh, but it does, John reported, he, uh, Bobby does get out there three, four times a year. And uh, they, do, they do sweep something John thinks is important to do. And it is overall, but it's not, it's not a weekly sweeping like some communities have touted they do. I don't know any that actually do, the, do that, especially in the communities I've been in. Uh, but it's a great idea if you can do it. I think it's part of his stormwater management requirements too. Yes, it is. Yeah, and it would, but it would help um, if if it was done more often. It would help some of the grass that's growing in some of these streets. It would help eliminate that problem. No question. But it's hard to do with unless you do uh, parking restrictions and making people move, and that's a uh, major conflict. Well, does, does, the street, does the street sweeper even do these back streets? streets because I've never seen Bobby yeah. on side streets. I've only seen him on Burlington Avenue. Well, you know, and um, I thought John said does the whole town. Three, four yeah, times around year. Memorial Day, he does the route and uh, where most of the traffic would have to go. I know he does that, but um, I, I would like to, I think Christine had a good idea and like, you know, having somebody else do it, uh, but maybe more often. <laughs> And rather than having always buying yeah. this equipment, uh, you know, because it's a, it's a lot of money to buy this equipment. Yeah. And then that's why you do a multi year program. And, and that means we're, we promise that during 2021, we will do the due diligence to determine what's the best way to do it. You know, yeah. we also hired the, the county guys to sweep our streets. Remember, Brickley offered yeah. up his uh, at the county, you know, on their rate. They're not going to profit on us. Yeah. Just those guys are getting paid. We get billed uh, because it, se it seems to me like with public works, we're we're losing more and more of the services we used to have from when I was. We don't. The guys don't go up in the bucket truck and cut trees down. Uh, we're not cutting field of dreams. We're not. They're doing the smaller parks and the you know and the waterfront parks with the lawnmower, but. Uh, we know they've been busting their butt on snow plowing and leaf picking, but uh, when it comes to street sweeping, and uh, it seems like we're farming that out, we're farming out trees. So maybe we got to farm out street sweeping rather than paying two hundred sixty thousand on a new street sweeper. Yeah, and the other thing is, is to put no parking uh, up on a street for you know. Couple hard to do in these little streets. Yeah, but they do it for the parades and different things. They, I mean you know, they do put no parking, wouldn't hurt. So I'm sure the people, once they had their street sweep, they kind of like it. Well, Burlington um, Avenue is a lot different and it's, you know, that parade's a hundred years old. So people understand that come the Memorial Day um, that they're going to be asked not to park and the police do it. They're the ones that put out the uh, no parking signs. Right. right, but they also put it on other areas where maybe people would uh, park. So, I mean, I've seen no parking on other streets when they're going to have a repair or something. So it wouldn't hurt to do it for street sweeping too. So people could have their street. Hey, as far as the weeds in the street, I don't think you're ever going to beat them. They come up when they want to come up in the middle well, of the street. That's because let's people the, are blowing their grass clippings in the street. Yeah. If they didn't do that. Let's uh, stick with the, the, the budget. Stuff. Yeah. Uh, we'll, My battery's uh, running out. Up so two, I'm gonna have to... Coming up on two hours of this. So let's. Uh, yeah. yeah. I, I think so, we should break on this and. Yeah. All right, like let me re put this together, send stuff out. We'll meet uh, uh, when is our next scheduled meeting. I know we're not going to introduce the budget until uh, April. So you've got another 22nd of March, I should March. know. Yeah. So exact same dates. And so I'll try to get information out earlier and have some discussions with people and uh, see how close we can get to uh, what your goals are for the meeting on the 22nd.
Well, thank you, Richard. Thank you. Sounds good. All right. Let me know if anyone has any more input or questions. Individual, yes. Uh, Rob, uh, back to my, my question uh, an hour ago. Go. Uh, the surplus, what's your comfort number? A million. <laughs> a million. <laughs> okay, I just, you know, bro. I, I just, I can, a million, a million. I get on this. Get him, Kate, get him. This is my 20th year, yeah. and you, we have never agreed to the amount that you've wanted, and we've always managed to recover our fund. Yeah, that's why we're doing so well. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I mean, I think this is fair. You know, we still have a substantial amount there, but every, I, I, well, you weren't always doing ours. Um, I was uh, doing but, it. Yeah, Bob was doing it. When I, I first mean, it's, came here, Kate, we were in bad shape. Yeah. yeah. I, could, I could look back quickly. Oh, yeah. We didn't have this kind of money ever. We didn't. We I didn't. came this in uh, 13, in 2013. We had a surplus of 1,089,000. We were using 967. I know. Next year, we had a million two twelve. We used 947. Then a yeah. million 134,850. Well, we brought it back each 890. year. That's what we were using, you know, 78%, 88% yeah. surplus. But we always brought Just it back. Just recently, we've pumped up a little bit to where we should be. Uh, I don't think we need to cut it back any. Not if we want to reduce the taxes. All right. Uh, any last comments or uh, thank you, Rob, for, for the good, uh, good work there. And Richard, uh, as always, uh, you give us so much. Um, my brain is full. So. Sorry about that. Anything okay, else you needed to share or wanted to share? Dan, what was that? Does the lieutenant have anything? else that he I'm wanted sorry, to share. Sorry, I didn't hear you. Uh, no, no, not this time. Yeah. Very good. I think that was a very good meeting. Very productive. Yes. Right. Thank and you for being uh, frank, John. The governor signed the uh, cannabis legislation today. I'm going to toke up now. <laughs> <laughs> Are you under 21? <laughs> well, I guess the weed man may be off the hook. <laughs> literally. But apparently underage is not allowed, but then the police are not going to be able to stop them. Have to give them a warning. Yeah, there's some liability issues already that were uh, recently brought up. We well, might dad be rolling over in his grave, I'd say. <laughs> but they say it's going to take about at least six months um, for the legal channels to, uh, to purchase cannabis but um, there's supposed to be, if, as long as you have under six ounces, and, and Adam, correct me if I read this wrong, as long as you have under six ounces, the police are not allowed to do anything. Yeah, we, we still haven't received anything from the prosecutor's office or the uh, attorney general's office to uh, clarify really much of anything right now. So, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's going to be interesting. Yeah. So, that's the other thing, too. The Township Committee, you're, you, um, you're going to be dealing stormwater ordinance regulations yeah. cannabis uh land use regulations that 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 clock is now ticking on that yeah. for the township to get those um yeah. ordinances those land use zoning ordinances in place as to what you want to allow and what you don't want to permit and the answer is not putting it is is not putting anything on the books that if you don't put anything on the books it says you're going to allow everything so yeah. Jeez. in those different categories. So you got a lot of work ahead of you this year. Uh, right. Uh, any last comments before we? Uh... No, sir. All right. No, sir. Um, motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Aye. All in favor. Aye. Aye, Aye Aaron. Stay safe, everybody. Yes. Good job. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Good Thanks, night, Richard. Good Thanks night. Rob. Have a good night, everybody. You Thank too, you. Aaron. Thank you. Sure. You're welcome. Thanks, Aaron. You're welcome. Have a good night. Good evening. Bye, Kitty. Good night, John Boy. <laughs>